Greetings, everyone. This is Michael Skellering, the Education and Outreach Coordinator here with Common Time Online, and we're coming to you today with something very, very special. As you know, the oldest youth orchestra in the United States of America history, the Portland Youth Philharmonic, is returning to concert. How great it is that the arts are coming back. They're returning to concert for their 98th season with their season opener titled Together Again on November 13th. Common Time Online is fortunate enough to be partnering with this prestigious arts organization to host the live stream of their concert right here on Common Time Online. Head up to the top tab called Arts Organizations, find the Portland Youth Philharmonic and book your tickets. They're $13 and we are so happy to be able to bring you an educational and an artistic and a musical experience such as this one. So as we get ready for that November 13th live stream for the Together Again Season 98 opening concert of the Portland Youth Philharmonic. I, Michael Skinner, wanted to share with you a pre-concert talk of sorts, but not those pre-concert talks you're used to at the symphony. <sighs> We've got a fun one. We've got a fun pre-concert talk where I'm going to tell you a little bit about the organization, the Portland Youth Philharmonic, and then we're going to go through and introduce you to all the pieces they're playing. So once again, thank you for tuning in. This is the pre-concert talk for the Portland Youth Philharmonics season 98 opener together again, streaming live November 13th at commontime.online. Book your tickets now. Let's get started. Did you know that the Portland Youth Philharmonic is the oldest youth orchestra in U.S. history? They're 97 years old, and I want to give you a list of things that the Portland Youth Philharmonic is older than. The Portland Youth Philharmonic is older than, drum roll please, chocolate chip cookies. The Portland Youth Philharmonic is older than shopping carts at the grocery store. When I was researching this, can you believe that the people thought that shopping carts were feminine? And this is actually funny because if you're like me, you know, when you're taking groceries from the car to the house, one trip, I'm a one trip guy. My little pinky's got two bags on it. But it turns out that men this time felt the same way. They felt that as men, they should just be able to carry all of their bags. But through some clever marketing, the inventor of the shopping cart was able to show people how useful they can be. He just did that after the Pearl and Youth Philharmonic was already bringing classics to your ear. The Pearl and Youth Philharmonic was founded before scientists discovered Pluto. So long before we gazed into the horizons and thought, hey, that's Pluto over there. The Portland Youth Philharmonic was already bringing classics to your ear. And our last thing, did you know that when the Portland Youth Philharmonic was founded, people were still carrying suitcases? The Portland Youth Philharmonic is actually older than the patent for rolling luggage. Crazy. Here's a brief history of the Portland Youth Philharmonic. The Portland Junior Orchestra Association, which was the original name, was founded in 1924 as an extension 
of Mary Dodge's Irvington School Orchestra. She had built an orchestra at the school she was working at and the excitement behind the orchestra and the attention they were getting and the number of people that wanted to join, even that didn't go to this school, kind of prompted people to expand this into something that could serve the greater Portland area. The original music director of this orchestra that was appointed was named Jacques Gershkovich. Please excuse me, Jacques, if I mispronounce your name. And he raised the orchestra to national acclaim over a 30-year tenure. He worked with this ensemble for 30 years. Then after that, the second conductor, Jakob Ashlamov, led the orchestra for another 40 years after that. So the first 70 years of existence, there were only two conductors and music directors. I always think it's really cool when organizations like this, you know, like when there's a new company, they say, as the sixth CEO, you know, can you imagine having an organization, especially for us educators, right? You know, some of us get a new principal every three years, you know, yet this organization had two leaders in 70 years. Now, during the second conductor's tenure, this is when the Portland Youth Philharmonic began to tour Europe and Asia and kind of build this international acclaim. They had already kind of conquered that youth orchestra position in the U.S. Then they really started doing it overseas, too. Throughout the rest of the organization's history, they were able to win multiple ASCAP awards, continue to lead tours of America across the West Coast, East Coast, the Heartland, and overseas. Looking forward to today, the PYP, that's our little acronym for Portland Youth Philharmonic, has educated thousands of young musicians in this greater Portland area. And these musicians have done on, gone on to do some great things in music. And I'm sure otherwise, too. But in music, members of this orchestra have attended Juilliard. And they have won jobs at such prestigious orchestras like the New York Philharmonic, the Boston Philharmonic, the Oregon Symphony, the St. Louis Symphony, and the National Symphony in D.C. One thing I will add is when you research this, it says that alumni have played with the Boston Phil but I think now it's called the Boston Symphony Orchestra, the BSO. If you're listening to me now and you're a young person or you know a young person who plays an orchestral instrument and they're thinking about joining their community's youth orchestra, do it. Because I joined my local youth orchestra, the Youth Orchestra of Greater Columbus. And that was probably my first insight into what it felt like to do this at a really high level. That was the first time I realized that people played violin for money, for, for their career. And this was my first introduction to a lot of the classics. I remember playing pictures at an exhibition when I was maybe 14, 15 years old. I remember... Um, what else did we play? I remember playing Capriccio Espanol, 14, 15, 16 years old. I remember playing um, the Saint Saint Symphony Number no. 3, the organ symphony, with one of the music directors and the organist from one of the local churches. Those type of music experiences, some people don't reach until they're well into adulthood. And I was captivated by these masterworks from a very young age. And if you're thinking like I was of how can I enrich myself musically, or how can I enrich myself in theater? How can I enrich myself in dance? You've got to get out there, go and support the local initiatives in your town. Sign up for classes at that dance school. Join that local youth theater company. Sign up and audition for that youth orchestra. Do it, you will not regret it. So now, enough about me. Let's hear some more about you. And I say that to me, enough about the background of the PYP. Let's hear about the music they're gonna be playing. The, la the first, not the last, the first piece they're gonna be playing is called Fantasia on a Theme by Thomas Tallis, written by Rafe Vaughn Williams. This piece is based on the Baroque hymn why Fumith in the Fight, which was written for Archbishop Parker Salter by Thomas Tallis, who was a very famous 
composer, he wrote hymns and cantatas and kind of sacred music that was popular during this Baroque time. He was operating mostly in the early to mid 1500s, if you can think back that far. And this hymn that he wrote was based on the second psalm from the Bible. When we use that term sacred music, we're talking about religious music. And now that I'm an international educator and I have a much larger worldview, sacred music to me doesn't have to be pigeonholed to just Western classical Christian music. All cultures and religions have music or sounds that are kind of tied to the religions of those regions, and all of that, to me, is sacred music. This piece was premiered in 1910 at the Gloucester Cathedral. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Gloucester? I hope so. The Gloucester C Cathedral in 1910 and conducted by Vaughn Williams himself. Vaughn Williams, the composer of this orchestral work, which is written for double string orchestra. There's two string orchestras that play in tandem. He is possibly the most famous of the English composers, and he wrote symphonies. You know, symphonies like... He didn't write that one, of course, that was Beethoven, but that is an example of a symphony. And he wrote ballets, chamber music, and of course, religious music like this one. One of his greatest contributions to the musical landscape of England was his love for the English folk song. He was kind of a musicologist of sorts that set out to find all these folk songs from the different villages from the hills to the fishing villages. And he was able to really put England back on the map of classical music by weaving all these different folk songs and musical traditions into his classical music work. And he kind of gave the classical music scene of England a real identity. This piece of music written for a double string orchestra is about 17 minutes long. So I like to think of what are some other things that take 17 minutes? Hmm, maybe I'm in Sharjah, driving from Sharjah to, to Dubai takes about 17 minutes. What are some things in your life that you think take 17 minutes? The second piece that's going to be performed on this November 13th live stream of Together Again, the season 98 opener for the Portland Youth Philharmonic streaming live on commentime.online under the Arts Organizations tab is Symphonies of Wind Instruments. This piece was written in 1920. I'm kind of seeing a theme here with this concert. 1920, 1910 by Igor Stravinsky the famous Russian classical music composer. And this piece was written in memory of the French composer, Claude Debussy, who had died a short time before this. There, were, there was a book of chorales and other short pieces that were kind of published in memory of Debussy, and Stravinsky used one of these for part of this piece. So this piece was definitely written um, to kind of commemorate Debussy and his contributions to classical music. In the title of this piece, you hear the word symphony, um, to be specific, symphonies. But this piece is not a symphony. The word symphony has two meanings, of course, symphony, like Beethoven. But there's also an older Greek definition of the word symphony, which just means sounding together. So maybe if me and you started singing at the same time, we could be a symphony. And Stravinsky uses this in his title, Symphonies of Wind Instruments, to say that this piece is a collection of wind instruments playing at the same time. But Stravinsky chose a lot of weird instruments for this piece. Instruments like the alto flute and the alto clarinet and the contrabassoon. So this is a regular flute, a soprano flute. The alto flute is longer and also thicker. Let me see if I can find you another example 
Uh, over here. This is a clarinet with our shower cap bell covers, which are great, by the way, because they're not airtight, but they're watertight. So they catch droplets, but allow air to pass. This is your standard clarinet, but an alto clarinet is longer and has a slightly curved neck, more similar to that of the bass clarinet. And the contrabassoon is a behemoth, swirling like wooden instrument that you sit with like this, and there is a pin that kind of anchors it to the ground, and it's like a regular bassoon, but lower. However, the PYP is performing a later published version of this work that uses more common instruments. I guess at the end of the day, Maybe Stravinsky wanted some people to actually play this music, so he rewrote some of the parts to include standard instruments as well. His use of these high-pitched woodwind instruments like piccolo and the flute in the very beginning of this piece could sound cartoonish in the way he hops back and forth between different melodies from the bassoon to flute melodies to alto clarinet melodies. It can kind of seem cartoonish at times. So when you listen to this music, especially in the beginning, Think back to some of the old cartoon music you might know, like Looney Tunes or Tom and Jerry, things like that. This work is in one solid movement, but like I told you, there's so many different sounding sections that it could actually resemble different movements of a larger work, like a symphony. On the surface, this music is quirky and unfamiliar to the classical music listener, but if you're listening, which you will be on November 13th, you can try to anchor yourself down by holding on to the pieces of this music, the parts of this music that repeat. You may hear a melody like... And then after you hear... Different types of music you may hear again. You may hear a different version of that melody, or you may hear it down lower. Or you may hear anchor yourself down to the parts of this music that repeat themselves. And remember, if you find yourself not, not enjoying this piece, piece, piece of music, Stravinsky, Stravinsky actually, actually said, said that, that he, he did, did not, and indeed he could, could not count, count on any of the success of his work. work. It lacked all, all those elements, elements that are infallibly appealing to, to ordinary listeners like me and you, like or to which they are accustomed. accustomed. This music, this music was not, not meant to please the audience, nor to arouse to the passions. Long, Long story, story short, short Zinsky does, does not care, care if you like music, music, music or not. Or not. And maybe, and maybe there's, there's a metaphor, metaphor in there, in there for, for all of us. us. My, My job, job is to make, make sure, sure that at least you've got, got some background information. information. And you've got, and you've got, got something to hold on to while you're listening. Now, now, these, these next, next pieces, pieces are part, part of the Portland Youth Philharmonic's, Philharmonic's Young, Young Orchestra, Orchestra Commissioning, Commissioning Initiative, where, where they, they have, have found composers, composers from, from diverse, diverse backgrounds. backgrounds. There's, There's composers, composers from, from Puerto, Puerto Rico, Rico, from, from Korea. Korea. There, there are, are women, women composers, composers here. here. And they, they commission, which means pay, pay and, and ask, ask them, them to, to write, write music, music for young, young orchestra players in the hope that young people playing in orchestra have new fun Exciting, exciting music, music to play, play at the concert in the future. The first, the first of which is called, is called Restless, Restless Winds, Winds by, by Nicole, Nicole Bwetty. Bwetty. And we actually, we actually had, had a chance, chance to sit down, down and speak with her about, her about this piece of interview her at link that, that will be coming, coming shortly, shortly for you and you pleasure. pleasure. And she, she received this commission, commission with, with that. that. She, she gave us a piece of Restless, Restless Winds, Winds, which is which written, written from wind instruments, and she wanted to kind of encapsulate her feelings and restlessness and anxiety during, during the pandemic. During, during this time, time, she felt isolated. isolated. Not, Not much, much music was happening. And she was, she was uncertain, uncertain about the future. future. And she, and she composed, composed this piece using odd time, time signatures, signatures like 444, four, 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 five, 5 8, eight 7, seven eight, 8, 8. Two, four. But 
they jump, jump around, around like, like this. this. And also, and also pointed, pointed leading, leading musical, musical figures. figures. She wanted, she wanted to, symbolize to symbolize that, that feeling, feeling of restlessness, that, that feeling, feeling of anxiety, anxiety she was feeling. Feel. However, unlike, unlike Stravinsky, Stravinsky, Nicole, Nicole wanted this piece, piece to be enjoyed, enjoyed by, by the people, people that, that listen. listen. And, and more, more importantly, importantly since, since this piece was written for young, young orchestra players, she wanted to be enjoyable and fun for the people that were playing it. And, and now, now, as the world, the world is opening back, back, back up, up so, many so many people are just glossing over, over what we all experience together, together. And, just, and just moving, moving on, on to the future. The future. And, I, and I really, really like this piece for the fact, fact that it kind of makes, makes us sit with, with those emotions, emotions and those, those feelings. feelings. You know, I, you know came I came to Dubai, to Dubai where I am now, now from, from the States, States. and things, things here were a lot, a lot more open than they were there, there. But, it but it felt good, good for me to revisit, revisit some, some of those feelings, feelings. and Restless, and Restless wins, wins by Nicole, Nicole really, really gives, gives us the opportunity, opportunity to confront, to confront that, that restlessness. restlessness. This, this piece, piece is, is like, like therapy, therapy in the in lens, lens of music. music. This second, this second piece, piece... Oh, sorry, I was just cloud watching. It's called, it's called Nimbus, Nimbus Draft, Draft by, by Ronaldo Moya. Moya. When's, When's the, last the last time you just, just sat out on a on nice, nice patch, patch of grass and, and looked, looked at that cloud? When's, When's the, last the last time, time you, had you had that, that grounding, grounding experience, experience of just, just touching, touching her? her. Nothing, Nothing between, between you and, you and that nature. nature. Looking, Looking up towards, towards infinity, infinity and, and pondering the vastness of space and time. If you have had a time to watch recently, then you've come, you've come to the right, right place. place. Because, because Nimbo, Nimbo Stratus, Stratus by Ronaldo Moya Moya is, is his, his musical, musical painting of a big, big gray, multi-layered Nimbo Stratus cloud. He, he describes this piece as a musical, musical representation, representation of these clouds. clouds. Like, like can produce, produce rain, rain, snow, snow or, or sleet, but, but never, never thunderstorms, thunderstorms or lightning. Larger, Larger masses of clouds, of clouds are formed, formed by small, small music diverse, diverse layers, layers of material from, from around, around the ensemble, ensemble that, that fit, fit on top, top of each other just, just like, like these clouds, clouds in real life. life. As in, As the, in the, the definition, definition of, of these clouds, clouds the, music the music never achieves the volume of thunder, thunder but, but never, never gives, gives up the possibility that it could have as it can move forward. These clouds are kind of like those. It smells like rain. The wind's, the wind's blowing. blowing. Is, is it going to storm? storm? Maybe. Maybe. Reynaldo, Reynaldo comes, comes to us from, us from the El Sistema, Sistema, that, that famed education, education program of Venezuela, Venezuela and, and then, then the Juilliard school. school. His resume, His resume as, as a composer, composer is extraordinary, is but the, but the accomplishment, accomplishment is that I find the most, most comforting. comforting. Is that, he that he taught at the Interlocking Arts, Arts Camp, Camp, which I have the pleasure of attending myself in several summers. The next, the next piece, piece on, on the concert, concert program, program from you on you November, November 13th, live stream event, event from the from Coral New Philharmonic, streaming live, live on Comic Time Online, Online is, is Four Elephants, Elephants by Gabriel, Gabriel Meneses. If I'm pronouncing that name correctly, it's Gabriel. In late, in late 2019, 2019, you know, you know that time before, before the world ended, ended. My, my wife and I had the pleasure of meeting, meeting, eating, and then bathing, bathing, bathing two elephants and cat tie. This, this experience, experience for me was scary, was scary in the beginning, beginning but magical, magical by the end as I was able, able to experience, to experience a new level, level of gentleness. And in, and in that, that moment, moment, I began, I began to think, think what, what the true meaning, meaning of being, being big, big was. was. You know, you humans, know, humans are, are not the biggest, biggest species, species on this, on this planet, planet, but in, but in terms, terms of what we can do in our cognition, you know, we, we are, are by far, far the biggest. biggest. And what will the world be if we act as elephants, elephants, gentle, gentle and kind, and kind and strong. strong? This, this idea, idea is not mean, mean to degrade, degrade us as humans, of course, of course not. But just, just to inspire hope, 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 you know, you know that, that we can be used to move forward. Gabriel says that in this piece for Elephants for Orchestra, 
it's inspired, inspired by this hope, hope the strength, the strength unity, unity, the power, power and dignity, and dignity and good, good luck, luck that, that elephants can spread, spread throughout, throughout the land. land. Like, like me, me in, in Thailand, Thailand Gabriel, Gabriel met his, his first, first element, element as, as a child, child but was reintroduced, was reintroduced to them at the Oregon, Oregon Zoo in 2013. And he was, and he was later, later inspired, inspired by a by collection of small, small clay elephants, elephants he saw, he saw while meandering, meandering through a market in Venezuela. Gabriel, Gabriel wanted, wanted this brand, brand new work. work. To give, to give the PYP, PYP musicians the same type of experience, experience he, had he had in 2013 and like, like the one, the one I, had I had six years later, later in 2019. 2019. Gabriel, Gabriel is from, from Venezuela, Venezuela and began, began his musical, musical study at, at 10. 10. And, and he, he wrote, wrote this, this piece, piece, his, his first, first piece, piece at, at 14, 14 and has, has since, since composed and performed with, with four groups around, around the world. The next, the next piece, piece on our, our program, program Jump, Jump by, by Tayshu Kim, Kim, is, is kind, kind of about the spontaneity and the contagious nature, nature of the laughter of children. Of children. As, a, As new a new father, I can tell, I can tell you first that, that your child's, child's laughter, laughter is a symbol, is a symbol of okayness and joy and hope. hope. The, way the way that, that babies, babies laugh, especially, especially so unbridled. Un uh, it's completely, completely separate, separate from the from stresses, stresses that, that we feel as, as adults, adults teenagers, teenagers, or even young, young, young children. children. And while, and while pondering, pondering, thinking, thinking about, about parenting, parenting, I couldn't, I couldn't help, help but notice, notice the way, way that today's, today's children, children, children have kind of lost, lost that joy, joy of going, going hot, hot, you know, you know riding, riding bikes, bikes and playing, playing tag, tag, falling, falling down, down, getting, getting hurt. hurt. Companionship, being, being bound, bound by, by leg, at least until the streetlights came on. That was, that was my parents, parents were strict on that. And that street, street light, light comes, comes on, on, you should be in the house, because that, that makes it dark, dark outside. outside. Tay says, says that this piece sounds, sounds like someone, someone saying, saying one, one, two, two three, three, jump. jump. And this, and this music, music while unpredictable, unpredictable at times, serves, serves as, as a beacon, beacon to re-communicate that, that joy of childhood, childhood play to everyone, everyone that, that hears these, these notes, notes and, 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 and the triplet based rhythms. Popular in the folk, folk music, music is native at home. home. Korea. Korea. Tish has even, even left, left a few little, little Easter, Easter eggs, eggs with them that really, really hone in, in on this concept, concept of joy. joy. You know, you this, know song? this song? That's Oh, oh to Joy, joy from Beethoven's Ninth, Ninth, Ninth Symphony. Symphony. He, he plays, plays around, around with that, that melody, melody and sticks, sticks it in, in at different, different points. points. Just, just, just to kind of Hammer, hammer home, home that, that idea of joy, joy and, and give you something, something to listen for while you're listening listen to peace. peace. Listen, listen up, up for this. this. It's good to hear, hear that when you're listening, you're listening to this piece, piece on November 13th. Tay Tay's music is described as fun, fun sophisticated, culturally connected, connected by the San Francisco's class of voice, voice among, among others. others. And, and he is he with, is us, with today us today with a doctor in music, music from, from Indiana, Indiana University, University and also, also attended Seoul National, National University. University. The, last the last piece on our program, program for the November 13th, 13th together, together again. Season 998 opened the Portland Philharmonic as Rhapsodia or Alfonso Fuentes Colón. The deep meaning of this piece, however beautiful, lies in the destruction left. In Puerto, in Puerto Rico, Rico by Hurricane Maria. Although that, that devastation created, created a feeling of hope, hope, hopelessness, one of them found inspiration in the way the city, the city still, still never, never slept. slept. The people, the people still, still outside, still sharing, sharing their human, human experience, experience with or without, without running, running water, water, water or power. power. Alfonso, Alfonso introduces, introduces a theme, theme that, that attempted, attempted to capture, to capture the, the sounds of these streets, streets buzzing, buzzing and, and the people, people he saw and heard, heard outside. outside. He then he makes, makes several, several variations, variations of this theme, which, which add, add to that form, form of rap rap you mentioned in your title. And if, and you're, if still you're still willing to dance, dance through, through the rain, rain and clouds, clouds you'll, you'll hear that Alfonso uses, uses the clave de rumba throughout, throughout this work. You may, you may hear things, things like, like this. Uh, 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 uh. 
Alfonso is a Puerto Rican composer, improviser, pianist, poet, and educator that has even had works performed in Sichuan province in China, which is special to me because I visited that province with my wife in 2019. It's the home of Hot Pot. Alfonso is a Latin Grammy nominee. And has, and has been active, active in using, using his work to, to empower others, others by, by advocating, advocating in front of the Puerto Rican legislative, legislative assembly to develop, to develop music, music and, and employment, employment based, based on the arts in his, his beloved, beloved homeland. So, so, to wrap, to wrap up, up, that, that was, was a pre concert talk. Tell, tell, tell me some of the history, history of the oldest, oldest youth orchestra, orchestra in American, American history, history, as well as, as, well as some, some of the background and the pieces that you're going to hear, hear. Some, things some things to listen, to listen for, for, and information, and information about, about the wonderful, wonderful people who compose, who compose these pieces. pieces. Thank, thank, thank you for listening. listening. We, can't we can't wait, wait to see you. Streaming live on Commentime.online, on the Arts Organization tab, right on November 13th for the Portland Mutual Harmonics season. 98 opener together, together again. again. Thank, Thank you. you.